This time, I'm up against Kiwi Bushman and wilderness expert Josh James at high altitude in the brutal mountains of Yunnan. Ed's going to be out of his league. I grew up in this kind of country. I do a lot of alpine hunting, so I'm right in my environment. Mother of Mary. Where did this guy get his license? The Yunnan province of southwest China is an area of extreme natural beauty, but it's dangerous. The race starts on the lower slopes of the mountains, and you'll head up into thick alpine forest, gathering what you need for later when the resources will be scarce. Above the tree line, you climb up and over a gigantic mountain range, make your way around a massive high altitude lake. Then you push through an opening called the saddle. We're talking an elevation over 4,000 meters here. And then it will channel you down the other side, and eventually you'll come to prayer flags. The first person there is the winner. And your marks, get set, go! All right, come on. I'm just going to get as high as possible. Instead of just rushing off half cocked up the hill like old Edward has, I'm going to go down to the valley floor and I'm just going to take stock of my resources. This is looking pretty dangerous now, but I'll lose too much time if I turn back. I've got to take the risk. The rocks are starting to get very, very slippery. And I'm hanging on to vegetation. Properly cold now. I need to find somewhere to shelter and warm myself up. Check this out. It's not the cave and the perfect overhang I was looking for, but this will do. I'm going to use this bark as a roof and also for under body insulation. Cutting a whole bunch of bamboo. I'm going to lay some on the floor to get it nice and flat. Then I'm going to put some bark over the top of it and then I'm going to cut a whole bunch more and just lean it up against the side of this rock and then stack the bark on top of the bamboo. I'm not going to win this race if I don't maintain my own physical health. That is why, right now, fire is critical. It's a bit like a bow drill, but with a massive, massive drill that I can put all my body weight on it, get all the downward pressure that I need to then crank out an embed. I've just used my boot lace as a string. I think I've actually formed an ember. Fire! Happy days. <laughs> oh, I must lit my beard on fire then. That was very close. Whoo, yes. Come on, you beauty. Let the good times roll. There's some really nice pools down the river. It should hold some fish. I'm just constructing a hinaki. A hinaki is a traditional Māori fish trap. I've got a small vine that I'm weaving it together with just to hold it in place. And then the rest of it is going to be made almost entirely from bamboo. I tell you what, this survival stuff is exhausting. I hope Ed's having a way <laughs> night than I am. Oh, that's a bit mean, isn't it? I'd love to say I wish him all the best, but I don't. I hope he's struggling. I'm going to put it right at the top of the pool here. The scent of the worms is going to drift down. And if there's fish in here, guaranteed they're going to come up and check it out. All right, get time. Good morning.
Let it go. That is extraordinary. Right. I've got one chance. I'm gonna try and hit it. It's dead. I'm thinking how I'm going to process this goat and make the best use of it. Every single bit of this animal is going to go to good use. It's imperative I get this hide off in one piece because this is invaluable to me up at altitude. This is another layer of clothing. This is a, a warm blanket that's going to keep me keep me from freezing up at 4,000 metres. Sweet. There's definitely a fish in there. Look at that. You beauty. Now that I've caught the fish, I'm just going to keep it real simple and roast it on top of the fire. Now, I need to be very careful because this fish could contain a number of parasites, so I'm going to make sure that I cook it very well just so I don't get sick. Mmm. Man, this fish is so good. Bloody delicious. I think I'm going to make kebabs for supper. Kidney, heart, liver, eyeball kebab. And then the, the meat, which I know that I can cure, I can then make into jerky. Slats across it where I'm hanging the strips of meat. I'm using smoke to um, carbonise the outside of the meat, um, and it will essentially cure the meat to be able to carry with me, and I can have a snack that I can eat on the move. I'm really struggling now. The more altitude I gain, the thinner the oxygen is, and the harder it is for me to breathe. <sighs> These berries are very good for altitude sickness. This lichen, this is an ancient Chinese herb. This is very, very expensive to buy. This is a chaga mushroom. Oh yeah, there's so many different kinds of wild mint. Oh man, that smells so good. I'm gonna pick a whole bunch of this, chuck it in my teeth. Clay provides a barrier that water cannot penetrate. So I'm just gonna build a little puddle, fill the puddle up with water, heat some rocks up, put the rocks in the puddle, and then I'm gonna have a cup of tea. And I'm hoping I'm gonna dump the chaga mushroom in, and I'm gonna put some of those herbs that I found in as well. The chaga helps the blood absorb the oxygen from the lung. So I do have this awesome bamboo straw that I whittle up. Oh, that's actually really good. Oh, yes. I think that that eyeball, that first eyeball, is ready to eat. It tastes good. The amount of nutrients in that eyeball and that bit of tongue is massive. We, I'm now in a very, very good position. And I'm making a, a pack frame to carry it all. I have no idea where Josh is. Fingers crossed behind me. Oh, what a night. I don't have a headache today, though. That's a huge bonus. I should be all right. The goodness of the iron in the organ meats having a positive effect. I feel like I'm able to run further and faster. That is the mountain pass. On the far side of that is the prayer flags, which is the finish. OK. I'm nearing summit. I can see the lake. 
I can see the flags. Oh, this is tight. This is tight. I should see them soon. This is very steep and treacherous. They've both taken different routes from the summit. Looks like one's gone round and one's going directly down. I can see the lake very, very close now. Oh, I'm at Smiley. Shed my jacket. I'm so close now. It's pretty full on. Last push. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Is he here yet? Do you think you're the first man out? I'm asking you. I'm oh, sorry, buddy. Uh, Josh, come here, mate. <laughs> well done, mate. Uh, <laughs> Victory. Did you have any tactics that maybe helped you come second? <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> yes, I'm disappointed, but um, if you take the ego out of the equation, I've both learned from this, I've tested myself, I've pushed myself to the maximum, so it's a positive experience. It really is. If there's anyone who's going to beat me, I'm glad it was you. I really am.